Previously in Breaking Point. Aidan, please, please tell us, how does it feel to be on the verge of getting behind the wheel for your very first race? I feel like a little kid. I look around and I'm surrounded by my heroes. And tell me about Casper Ackerman. How is that relationship coming along? It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it then? He tried to stop them from signing you. Didn't want to play babysitter. We all feel sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. I had a call this morning from Christian Horner. You're being watched. You know what his problem is, don't you? Thinks you're getting too old. You want respect? You give respect! That's how it works! How about you give me a little respect? How about you earn it first? I'm done. You what? I'm retiring. Why didn't it work out between you two? He's on more money than me. What? He didn't want me on the team. Didn't I? And you thought I was past my best. So none of this is true? There's always gossip in the paddock. And ever since he's arrived, it's been one man at the center of it all. I want us to push for fourth. I want us to beat Butler. And I want that seat to go to you. So Alfa Romeo potentially on track to really upset Alfa Tauri here. Butler's closing in on Ackerman. Down the inside he goes, and they hit each other. Butler into the barrier, and that looks to be the end of the race for him. The Dutchman looks to be continuing at. It's great to see him still in this fight, Crofty. Good the third, eight. What about Casper? We let Aiden pass. Let Aiden pass. We did it. We did it. Have you seen the crash? Butler's okay? Bruised ego, perhaps. <laughs> What's it like bringing a brand new team to the F1 grid? You know, the first time you see a car, your car, with your branding, your name on it, in an official race, alongside Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, that's what it's all about. You make it sound like a dream come true. If only. When did you first get a sense of what was in store for Connor Sport? 2022 season, <clears throat> straight out of the box. The drivers were always going to clash. That was a calculated risk. But the car, mm, the car, the car had problems. We're midway through the Miami Grand Prix. It's been a cracking race so far, and it's all up for grabs. Absolutely, Crofty. Some fantastic driving here today. Especially, I have to say, from Aidan Jackson. I don't think I've ever seen the Connor Sport car being put through its paces quite like this. This is a team, Connor Sport, that have got a lot to prove this season, but Jackson might just be the man to do it. Connor Sport, it must be devastating for the drivers. Confirmation as the car comes to a halt, the Connor Sports Aidan Jackson won't be seeing the chequered flag today. But it looks like his teammate will. Jackson's DNF puts Devon Butler in a position where he might just be able to secure some points for Connor Sport. Aidan's out. Yep, engine problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> Good job you got me. All right, Devon, don't push it too hard. We cannot risk losing both cars here. It's in the bag, mate. All OK, Aiden. Yeah, uh, how's Devon doing? Yeah, he's doing all right, mate. He looks like he's going to bring him some points for the team. Good for him. If it's not one thing, then it's another. Did you not see what happened out there today? Aiden, I agree with you 100%. We are doing everything we can. I know the car is not perfect, but... Andreo, it's every race. 
Do you know how I look losing easy points like this? Knock, knock. <laughs> Sounds like there's a right show going on in here. What am I missing? Not now, Devon. Aiden and I were just discussing issues with the car. Again? I thought that was all in hand. I, I had no problems today. Smooth. You know what they say, a shoddy workman always blames his tools. <laughs> mate, 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 mate. You can look at my setup data any time you want. I've told you that. It might help. And I've told you before. It's not a setup issue. The problem is... Jackson, that was the problem with the 2022 season. Ask anyone. I mean, at the end of 21, everyone thought Aiden was going to be signed by one of the big three. But, uh... I guess they couldn't reach an agreement, so we both signed for Connor Sport. And do you think that affected Aidan? <laughs> That's no secret. Now, for that 22 season, Jackson was a nightmare. Into turn two we go now. Butler comes out of the pit lane. Jackson is right there with him. This is dicey, Ant. Neither one of these two wants to give way. This would have been a lot cleaner if Jackson had just let him go. He's just not giving him an inch. They continue onwards, still wheel to wheel, almost touching there as well, as we head down the straight towards the next chicane. Nothing to separate either car, and through the chicane we go. And now Jackson sends them both off the track and Butler over a curb. That looked nasty. And I do believe that one of their cars is damaged here, Crofty. I think it's Butler. Damage, Ant, but also they've lost places too. Unbelievable and totally unnecessary as well. Well, one damaged car, places now to make up. What a complete mess that was. Uh, hey there, can you uh, raise that lamp about six inches, right? Excellent. A butler should always look sharp. <laughs> so. At what point in the 22 season was it clear to you that the team was struggling? Oh, well, right after the Hungarian GP. I may only be the money, but even to me it was obvious. The whole thing was a sham. Yet again, Connor Sports Jackson and Butler battling it out on track. It seems as Hang if on they... two secs, Nat. OK, Devon, Aiden's lapping faster than you. I need you to let him pass, please. Devon, do you copy? Listen to me, I need you to let Aiden pass now. Butler just completely blanking the order there. Seems like he can even acknowledge it. Too true, but as you can see, no way through for Jackson. No way at all. This Connor Sport rivalry is getting heated on the track here in Hungary. OK, I'll leave that in your capable hands. Devon, you had a problem with a team order today? Didn't happen. What? Look, I know everyone's saying I ignored it, but it didn't happen. I never got the order. Check the comms. Shoddy workman always blames his tools, eh? Check the comms. OK, we check the communication pipeline. Fix it. This cannot happen again. Typical. Aiden, listen. What's the point? It's just Devon being Devon. And what? That makes it OK? He's an arrogant... No, you're right to call him out. But imagine if we didn't give him certain freedoms. He'd be even harder to manage. As his father, I know. Aiden, you're the best driver that we have. And it's right for you to put Devon in his place. He needs it. The team needs it. Thanks. Between you and me, I don't think this team is right for me. I think... Honestly. We don't deserve you. And I know that you've been discussed at other teams. So just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. I'm sorry if I've spoken out of turn. About Devon? <laughs> Not at all. 
You know the best way to keep Devon in his place? What's that? Beat him. So what about Callie Mayer? Was she on your radar at this point? Of course. She was making big waves in F2. And Ackerman would not shut up about her. Here's our race leader, Callie Mayer. She has been blisteringly fast around Zandvoort here today. And look at that! She's going into pit! Interesting strategy they've decided on there. She has been lapping at rapid pace, but is this the right call? Yeah, it's a bold move for sure. Looks crazy to me, but let's find out. Here she goes then on brand new tyres. The rest of the field still sticking with their original set. Where exactly does Cali Mayer come out? Let's see. Kelly, what do you put your success down to this season? Oh, I'd say probably my speed. In what way? I find lapping faster than everyone else really, really helps. Casper, <laughs> Casper. No, no, no. Seriously, though, I have a great team around me, and this guy, more than anyone else, has been pretty useful to have around. <laughs> Casper, what are you shy? Come up here. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Callie says you've been a factor this season, Casper. I'm not the one driving. Didn't agree with my tyre strategy, though. <laughs> this one has no respect for her elders. <laughs> but can you give us more detail as to the exact role that you're playing, Casper? None whatsoever. It's all about her. He's probably right, to be fair. So, were you already in touch with Casper Ackerman at that point? <laughs> Ackerman and I go way back. Another pit stop here at Suzuka. This time it's Aidan Jackson coming in. He's been making steady progress today and Connor Sport need him to. They desperately need some results and they could do without this. And look, there's chaos in that garage. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aidan Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. That's a long, long time to wait. Just sat in the cockpit. What is going on down at Connor Sport? Well, the tyre is finally out of the garage and on the car, and Aidan Jackson's back out in the race, but it's a long time in the pit, and that will cost them dearly. You saw it, right? The pit stop? How am I supposed to deal with that? I know, I want a chance to prove what I can do, though. In a top-tier seat, I, I deserve it. I've heard there might be interest. I just, I can't stay here. Okay, well, what would you do? So, what advice did you give him? Well, I told him to try to stay calm, see out the season, and then go to the final team meeting. See if that changed his mind. And where were you at this point? Oh, I was uh, busy getting Cali ready for the final race of the F2 season. The final race of the season, now well underway here in Abu Dhabi. A few different drivers in contention for the F2 Championship. But here's the favourite, Callie Mayer. She's been so consistent this season, so fast. My money's on Mayer for the Championship, no question. If she can finish high enough, the title belongs to her. She's done it, as many predicted she would. A star is born. Callie Mayer becomes the first woman ever to win the F2 Championship. Historic. <laughs> well, I mean, someone had to be the first. But I just hope that this shows that talent can get you as far as money. And what about your dad? Has he called to congratulate you yet, Callie? Nope. Next question. Hey, Callie, Callie, what's it like being a woman in motorsports? We're sure everyone wants to know. <sighs> I don't know, John. What's it like being a man in journalism? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hot-headed. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. 
But you know, that's, that's kind of what you need in a driver. Let's not forget that Cali taking the championship was a big deal. You know, for, well, for the sport, but really for everyone. And for you, how did you feel? It was one of the proudest moments of my career. It was the first time I mentored anyone. Yeah. I was a little sad to be moving on. So, had you already told Kelly about your new job? Yes, yes, of course. And I told her, you know, how I wished that I could take her with me. But she understood. And Aidan, had you told him? No. No, he was, um, he was too busy. Busy? Preparing to tell the team that he was leaving Connorsport. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know Aiden had something he wanted to say, but first I have a matter I would like to address formally. It is no secret that I have been spread a little thin <laughs> this season. I mean, I own the team, I run the team. It's, it's a lot, okay? Which is why I will be stepping away from the principal role next season. I'll still be pushing Connor Sport Racing to be the brand we know it can be, whilst the new principal will be laser focused on performance and results. And we have already found a man to step into that role. Casper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, this is a big step up for me. I'm really looking forward to see what next season brings. It's truly an honor to be on board. I am sorry for the dramatic nature of the announcement, okay? Humor the man who pays you. <laughs> we all look forward to working with Casper, yes? Good. Then let us continue. Aiden, you had something you wanted to say? The floor is yours. <laughs> no, it's, it's nothing. I just wanted to say, <clears throat> um, thank you, everybody, for all your hard work this year. And I'm really looking forward to next season, especially with Casper at the helm. Did Casper being around affect you going into the 23 season? I have bigger things going on than Casper. Do you have any regrets about 2023? Anything you'd have done differently? No. No, I'm in a good place now. Besides, what's to uh, regret about being the story of the season? Great race out there today. Just in the highlights. Listen. I know we've had our run-ins and, well, last season was last season. Fresh start for the team. What do you say? Oh, Jackson. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Bin's over there. Yeah. Nice one. the season just gone? The 2023 season was completely different for Connor Sport. How so? But, uh, the car, for one. We dined out the most critical issues and it was just starting to live up to its potential. Can we talk about what happened with Devon? Butler, good pace here down the straight. Into the corner we go. That's a little too late. And he nearly goes off the track on the exit. And is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Crofty. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. OK, Devon, we're going to have to ease off from the brakes. Brakes don't feel right. OK, we'll have a look at it, but you're going to see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? The 
Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on. No, oh, it's a... Well, it's a big deal when one of your drivers decides to do their own thing. So I called him out on it at the next team meeting. And what was Devon's reaction? Well, he denied the whole thing. You know, blamed it on a comms fate. Which I thought was strange. The same thing happened the year before when I was principal. And he gave the exact same excuse. Yeah. You wanted to see me? Ah, there he is. You're a difficult man to pin down. Right, I cut uh, right to the chase, Devon. Tell me what's happening. What are you talking about? Well, it's not just disregarding team orders. Paddock talks. People are saying you've been distracted, that you're ignoring them completely. <laughs> Now my job is to make sure the team works smoothly, like clockwork, so I'm just trying to work out what's going on. I told you, check the comms. Yeah, the comms are fine, Devon. We checked. What's going on? Nothing. Just cut that out. Show me some respect now. Okay. I heard the order. All right? You happy? Why ignore it? I'm feeling it, Cass. The pressure, paddock gossip these last couple of months. Oh, come on. You're Devon Butler. You are the paddock gossip. <laughs> You've heard what they're saying, right? You've seen what they're writing. Driving on daddy's money. It's, uh, it's making me second guess myself. Okay. We can work through that. Start changing the, the team narrative. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'd like you to see someone from the medical team. Just to be sure. I've booked you in for this afternoon. No, no, Cass, Cass. Look, I I've got a race to prep for, okay? I need my head in the game. I'm fine. I get that. That's fine. But I want you to see them straight after the race. Understood? Yeah. Fine. What a mess! Devon Butler, with that move, is out of the race. He won't want to see that too many times. We want to see him out of the car, though. That's good news. Big relief there. Although he does still look a bit unsteady on his feet, Crofty. Well, thumbs up to the crowd, but I'd imagine after that, he'll be quite shaken. It was his hearing. He'd been keeping it from us. I think maybe he'd been trying to keep it from himself. I mean, he was at the height of his career. Yeah, what can you say? How did you feel? I, I was devastated. But, uh, five years in F1. 
Can't argue with that. I mean, most people never even get the chance, so. And I was still one of the best while I was out there. You ask anyone. How did you feel when Devon left? How did I feel? But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver, a permanent one, and fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we... Stop! The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, Davidov. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California will not be signed to Connorsport. Why not? Just... <laughs> just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her, hmm? Forget legacy. <laughs> oh, we'd be... You'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. Come on, you know she deserves it. The daughter, who took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? Contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh? Why are you hesitating? You've always dreamt of racing in F1. Not like this. Do you know what he did? Oh, who? Your father? He refused to support me. Said he'd only fund one of his children. Said Devon had better prospects. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Mum used the divorce settlement to help me out, but... And you're only here because he sent you. No. This was my idea. My decision. And this is me asking you, Callie, not your father. We need a replacement and ask for you because I know how good you are. And that's the truth. I always said I'd do it on my terms, not his. I'll look out for you. Just like I did in F2. Will you keep him away from me? I'll do everything in my power. Everything. To make sure that all you have to think about is driving. Have we got a deal? You might never get this opportunity again. You know that. History is made here today as Callie Mayer, Connor Sport's latest signing, becomes the first female driver of the modern era to participate in an F1 race. What a moment. I've got goosebumps. Now, for those of you wondering at home, only a handful of women have entered at least one Grand Prix over the years, but none have even had the opportunity to qualify since 1992. Italy's Giovanna Amati, for those of you wondering. So today is very much a new dawn here in Baku. And Maya was impressive in qualifying. So let's see what the Grand Prix has in store for her. 
Yeah, I have to say, it is quite a tight-knit pack out there. Fierce competition all round. I really wouldn't want to call this one. Indeed. We've seen some brilliant driving here today, especially from young Callie Mayer. She seems to have made the transition to F1 as if she was born for it. Here comes Callie Mayer, closing in on her teammates. She's practically on top of me. Aiden, calm down. You're on different strategies. Just let Callie pass. OK, Callie, Aiden's going to let you pass at the next corner. Let's go. Copy. Will Mayer get past her teammate now? Here she comes. But there's contact. Contact between the two Connor Sport drivers. Jackson's out. He gets the worst of it. Mayer's clear. Oh, Jackson's damage looks bad. I think you're right, Crofty. His race is over. Mayer seemed to catch Jackson unawares, though. I'm not sure why. What was that? Why didn't she wait for me to move over on the exit? OK, Aiden, are you all right? It's just another butler. And do you feel extra pressure at Connor Sport? It must be difficult with your dad looking over your shoulder. Look, it's F1. It's not possible for me to feel any more pressure than I already do. So, no, it's not an issue. Kelly, have you felt any pushback from anyone in the F1 world, just with you being the first female driver in the sport? No, everyone's been amazing. And I'm not the first, I'm just the latest. How's your brother? Are you really just keeping his seat warm? Uh, you'd have to ask him that. Um, but he is getting the help that he needs. And no, I have no intention of giving up this seat. What happened out there between you and Aiden today? Uh, it's just a mix-up. Um, I, I thought he was letting me through on the entry, but he clearly had other ideas. We spoke to him earlier, and he said it was deliberate on your part. Any comment on that? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. You've always gone by Mayer, and now you're in a team financed by your father, driving in your brother's seat. Would you go back to the butler name? Should have expected it, right? I thought you did. <sighs> it's not what I mean. I mean, I'm a woman. I get it. I'm happy to talk about it. Then what is it? Well, it's always the same, isn't it? So you're a woman, and then every question about Dad, about Devon, about the butler, name. Just forget about it. Oh, I can never get away from it, can I? The only question about the race was about Aiden. Well, you know, maybe if we'd let it run a little longer, there would have been... Casper! Don't defend them. Okay. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. <sighs> Look, it's fine. I'll be faster next time. The incident at Baku, do you think she did it on purpose? She did do it on purpose. Yeah, check the footage. So you didn't warm to her? We weren't the best of friends, no. I did not like Aiden, not at all. <laughs> Why not? I thought he was immature about what happened in Baku. I mean, like he never really got over it. He was aggressive on track, and the paddock talks. He just wasn't happy at Connor Sport. Thought he was too good for the team. He just had a bit of an attitude problem. It's already complicated, and I've told you they don't need to know. Well, it's your call, of course. But the dishonesty makes me uncomfortable. We'll talk about it later. Yes? Let's make this quick. Or maybe we could give Casper a bit of our time. This wasn't scheduled. What, are you too busy for us now? Just tell them, Casper. Andreo, please. Can we get started? Yeah, Aiden's got a meeting at Mercedes he needs to get to. Enough! Enough! OK? This... This is what we have to talk about. It has to stop. Understand? If we can't pull together now... If we can't pull together... We are finished. Wait, what does that mean? Andreo? It means that if we don't finish fifth or higher, Butler Global will pull funding. And I don't think we'll find an investor to replace him. Not now. Wait, what? Casper? Yeah, it's true. Well, then we're finished. Andreo? We're finished. So yeah, Dad brought me onto the team and then immediately threatened to shut it down. Why would he do that? It's kind of his thing. Caddy, great race. What do you mean, prove you wrong? I was just trying to congratulate you, that's all. Prove you wrong about what exactly? 
I didn't mean anything by it. I was just saying well done. By reminding me how little you actually believe in me. Callie. You are a piece of work. But it was a great race. You said you'd keep him away from me. I'll talk to him. How is he getting involved on comm? Well, he didn't ask, he just did it. Yeah, he'll do whatever he wants until someone stops him. I said I'll talk to him. That was a great result out there today. Let's forget about your father, okay? Yeah. Good. Looks like he's found someone else to talk to anyway. Everything else looks fine. It's just about that rear wing. I don't want to sacrifice any more downforce. It's okay, it's your call. Now, let's uh, check the weather again in an hour. Oi, oi! <laughs> Did you miss me? Hello, sis. Hi, bro. Jackson. Devon. How are you, Devon? I am excited. Very excited to be involved again. Now, you, you pretend I'm not here, you carry on, please. Involved? How? Oh, you know, just a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of... Uh... Involved? How? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Huh. And what does Andreo say to that? He'll agree, Casper. It's fine. Were they pleased to see you? People are always pleased to see me. And what was your new role? Uh, I guess you might call me a liaison. Yeah, I just, I love to liaise. Dad wanted me to talk to people, keep people's spirits up, give some friendly words of advice, that kind of thing. But uh, it was tough. Yeah, Aiden still had that ego. Still thought he was too good for the team. Wouldn't listen to Casper's advice, that was a problem. And then Andreo, he was worried about the future of the team. He had Dad breathing down his neck. And Callie, well... Let's just say Callie wasn't really looking for my advice. The whole thing was a mess. I mean, honestly, I'd only been gone five minutes. <laughs> the two Connor Sport teammates not exactly doing each other any favours this afternoon. For me, they're a little bit too close for comfort. What is Aiden playing at? Tell him to back off. OK, Callie, he knows. Yeah, same old stuff. Jackson really wants to make a move out there, but Mayer, no chance. Not letting him pass. Towards the curve of Grande we go. He's going for it. It's really close. It's too close. There goes Mayer's front wing. Oh, Aiden Jackson, what happened there? This now seems like a running theme at Connor Sports. Yes, this race is critical for them. When are they going to just pull themselves together? OK, box please, Kelly. Let's get that wing replaced. Joke. Box this lap, please. Box this lap. Yeah, copy. Slanging off. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Scared the life out of me, mate. Nah, I didn't mean to. Picking up any tips? I don't think they like the short straights here. You didn't mind them, did you? <sighs> I love this track. Always do well here. Huh? Well, used to. How are you doing, Devin? Me? Golden, mate. Loving life. Yeah, sure. You know what it's like to leave all this behind, don't you? That's the most difficult thing I've ever done. Yeah, well, uh, like that. But, uh, I didn't choose this, Casper. I didn't, um, I didn't. I know. So you came back, right? How's it treating you? Ups and downs? Hmm. How's our old teammate doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he's happy here. <laughs> he still thinks he belongs in that top team, see? He's never let it go. That's the problem. 
You know, I, uh, I could have a word with him. I mean, if you think that might help. It's all a bit dead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I understand. No, Devon, I mean it. Yeah? Scouts on the mate. Did Casper really want you to talk to Aiden? Eh, I read between the lines. Look, Casper's good at lots of things, but I, uh, I know people. Yeah, I know how to get in their heads. And I wanted to help Dad, help the team, so... Uh... Leave me alone. Listen, I'm just saying, mate, if you were such an incredible driver, you wouldn't be a Connorsport, would you? Sorry, it's the truth. No offense. Or maybe I won't be here next season. <laughs> oh, dude. You know what your problem is? Yeah. You. You think you're better than the team. I remember I remember when Aiden Jackson was just, just happy to be behind the wheel of an F1 car. We all liked that guy far better than this one. You never liked me. <sighs> no. But Casper did. Once upon a time. Oh, you're different now. You think you're too good for the team. Your head's stuck in some imaginary big three seat in Cloud Cuckoo Land, mate. No, no, no. You have got to drive the car you're in. You're lecturing me about ego. A subject I know well. Oh, right. I get it. So you're allowed to be cocky, but I'm not. Is that it? There's a difference. How can there possibly be a difference? This isn't you. This isn't you, mate. Oh, get lost. Be true to myself. Drive the car I'm in. The wisdom of Devon Butler. Should I be living my best life too? Just drive the car you're in, mate, yeah? Ciao. Come on, I just want to check out. Why, because he told you to? Stop making this about him, just talk to me. We raced in a lot of the same races growing up and one of us would always have a better race than the other. So in the car, on the way home, one of us would be happy and the other would be completely miserable. There was no middle ground. It was like it was impossible for us both to be happy at the same time. And it's kind of been the same ever since. Look, it's my job to talk to the drivers, Callie. Yeah, and who gave you that job? <laughs> Why are you being like this? It's not even me you're angry with. Maybe it is. Oh, really? This again? We were kids, Kelly. You left me behind. <sighs> Come on, what was I supposed to say? Oh, oh, thanks, Dad, for, for, for continuing to invest in my career, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline, just in case I hurt poor Kelly's feet. Of course not. And what? It didn't have to be a choice, Dev. He had the money to fund both of our careers. I just... <sighs> I wanted you to... fight for me. He never listened to me. He always listened to you. Well, we were young. Yeah. But we're adults now. Yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm not much competition anymore. <laughs> you never were. I'm sorry, Kelly. For everything. You were always faster than me. <laughs> there, I said it. Nice try. I mean it. And did you mean it? <laughs> of course not. Faster than me. No, 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 no. She was never faster than me. She'd love that. No. But if there's one thing my old man taught me, it's that sometimes people need to hear what they need to hear. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I saw him in the paddock. This would have been Sao Paulo. And I, um... Yeah, I finally spoke to him. I just wanted to know why. There's something's come up. I'll uh, call you back. Cully. 
So I'm uh, allowed to talk to you now. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Why are you being so hard line about this? For this to be a worthwhile investment, Connorsport Racing must be successful. It's just business. It's not, though, is it? Excuse me? Well, why am I on the team if it's just business? Why was Devon? You can't keep involving your family in this and then hiding behind it's just business. This is one of the biggest investments I have ever made. I must take care of the business. Come on. Who do you think will uh, inherit it after I'm gone? Well, Devon, obviously. I'm, I'm not interested in any of it. Matters are complex, Kelly. But they all benefit the business. They all benefit the family. And ultimately, they all benefit you. You said this the last time you tried to stop me racing. I didn't buy it at 12, and I certainly don't buy it now. I don't understand what goes on in that head of yours. You threatened to end my F1 career. And then you claim it's for my benefit. Have you any idea how much money I have ploughed into the team? <sighs> yeah, that's the thing with you. Money. Nothing changes. I wouldn't expect you to understand. No, Dad. I wouldn't expect you to. You need to be more realistic, that's all. Not everyone survives in F1. You know that. Fifth in the standings. Fifth. Okay, so we are running two quite different setups out there today. And you don't need me to tell you how it... You don't need me to tell you how it... Davidoff, that's enough. I'm sorry? Get out. What on earth are you talking about? I've had an entire season of you whispering in people's ears. I'm asking you to leave the meeting. You can't be serious. This is not your team. And after today, it might not even exist. So get out and let those of us who actually care about the result do our jobs. We'll talk about this later, Ackerman. You can threaten me after the race. So be it. You coming, Devon? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might actually stay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Well, that's up to you. Okay, listen. You all know what's at stake. If we race as individuals today, the team dies. The only way we can survive this, the only way that any of us are coming back next season, is together. We all understand this? No, no. Aiden, Callie, look at me. You look at me. We understand this, yes? If you put yourself ahead of the team today, there's no more team. Callie. We got this. Yeah. And, um, I'm sorry if I was ever... Wow. What? Are you apologizing? Yeah. <laughs> I will forgive you on one condition. What's that? You get your share of the points. All right. Deal. <laughs> Chin up. You know, before the race begins, anything is possible. Anything. On the one hand, you have the true icons of the sport, certain drivers, certain teams who set the pace, who you expect to do well. On the other hand, you have the underdogs. And we are always there, always pushing for another place, another point, looking for the smallest opportunity that tiniest mistake we can punish. And in that moment, just before lights out, 
It's like, it's like the world holds its breath, you know? Everybody just waits. The air is heavy, you know? And I knew whatever happened, corner sport had made its mark on the history of the sport. <sighs> and I was at peace with that. So you weren't nervous? Are you kidding? <laughs> so we know how it stands right now. But just how different might it be when the checkered flag waves here in Abu Dhabi? And it slides out, and away we go. Down the main straight we go. Here goes Jackson again, moving up the field. What a great race for him. Yeah, it really is so far, Prof. I mean, it's a circuit. He really enjoys. Remember the race in 2021 that he put together there? It was fantastic stuff back then. Who could forget it? Connor Sport need a performance just like that today. May is doing okay. Jackson really delivering. Great stuff, Aiden. Come on, I think we can get one more place here. Push, push. Uh, something's not right. Assessing, assessing, standby. I'm losing speed. Heading down the back straight now. He's in a great spot, but hang on, he's slowing. He's slowing. Something is very, very wrong. Yeah, I think he's got a problem here, Croft. I wonder what it is. Could it be engine related? Look, they're throwing their hands in the air on the pit wall, and he's out. And yeah, that's the engine gone. 2023 is over for Aidan Jackson. It's a dramatic exit, and it wasn't what he was hoping for. Something happened up there? Yeah, engine failure, I'm afraid. Aidan is out of this race. Repeat, Aidan's out of the race. Did you get that? Aidan's out. I heard. What? Let me speak to her. Why? Just give me the headset. Sure about this? I'm sure about everything. That's what concerns me. Kelly. Devin? Yeah, we've had a chat. We think it's best if you uh, don't push the car too hard. What? Why? Look, you're way back, Cal, OK? We, we don't want to blow your engine too, so just just cruise it in and finish the race. It's got to be realistic here. Copy. Sorry, is this a team order? No, Casper agrees. It's just not going to make up that much ground. It can't be done. Just cruise it in, Cal. Trust me, you watch her go. by her today. Connor Sport sure will be very delighted with that one. And if you believe the rumours, Anne, this is a team whose future has been in doubt. Surely, though, they've done enough to return next season. I think they've been wonderful to watch. It was amazing. I'm not sure I've ever seen a race like that. I was wrong about Callie. And how did you feel about the engine failure? There's no such thing as the perfect car. The one that failed us was the same one that got us here in the first place. So, you've just got to drive the car you're in. Well, everyone's an individual, which means that everyone is um, motivated a little differently. Take Devon as an example. He always responds well to having his ego brushed, to being told that he's the best. His greatest fear is failure, so it gives him further to fall, keeps him hungry. Callie, on the other hand, uh, has an innate drive to prove people wrong. If someone tells her something's not possible, she'll do everything in her power to achieve it. A sort of uh, stubborn determination that can be harnessed. <laughs> and then there's Aiden. I mean, when he started in F1, People thought he was a nice guy, but he was incredibly ambitious. It's just what makes Aiden tick. Which is why I may have started a rumor or two about uh, interest from other teams during his time at Connor Sport to stoke that ambition. Keep his eyes on the horizon. 
a lot of people might see that as manipulative, wouldn't you agree? Well, of course. <laughs> Motivation is manipulation. It's the same thing. Is it? Look, the end justifies the means. After all, it's just business. Looking forward to next season? Just let me at it. Will you stay next season? I've told Casper I'll stay if he does. Do you still have a job after your run-in with Davidoff? <laughs> well, we'll see. We did it! We secured the funding! What a team! And that's all that matters. <laughs> right now, yes, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done? Yeah? Cool.